Hello everyone and welcome to Inspiration, a show that focuses on inspirational people doing inspirational things. My name is Devin Nakasone. I be, I'll be your host today. Um, we'd like to thank Olelo Channel 55 and of course the nonprofit 501c3 Prayers on Wings. Today is a very special day and I always say that um, pretty much every show but today is a really special day because it's my birthday and um, I get to celebrate it with a very special guest and it's um, it's, it was such an honor to meet her and watch her grow in this very short uh, few, few months and I'm um, excited to see what's ahead. With no further ado, I'd like to introduce Miss Kakaako Janae Capella. So this is, this is her. So welcome, Janae. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having oh, me. Thank you so much for coming. You know, um, just so we can um, brief our guests of, mm -hmm. of how we met, I had the honor and privilege of being one of your judges, yes, in the Miss Kakaako Diamond Head, Miss Diamond Head pageant, right? Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? That was about. It was in October, so a couple of months ago. Okay, October. Wow. But thanks to Devin, I now have this title, and I'm now able to go on and compete in the Miss Hawaii Scholarship Program to hopefully further my education and pursue a personal platform of mine that's very, very special. And that platform is, is raising awareness of human trafficking. Human trafficking. Okay, so just. Um, I know there's a lot of misconceptions of what human trafficking is. In yeah. fact, I tried to even Google uh -huh. human trafficking, and there is no real description that comes out. You know yeah. what I mean? So if, since, since you have a platform of human trafficking, and we're going to focus on your, your why and your mission, yes. can you define for our viewers what is human trafficking to you? Yeah, of course. Well, like you said, you probably Googled it, and there's 3,000 different answers, and a lot of them go really in-depth on these things you really don't even understand and you by the time you finish reading it you don't know what you read and you don't even know what human trafficking is about there are two types of major trafficking first off it's a form of modern day slavery it's slavery there are labor trafficking and then there's sex trafficking so I'm really focused on eradicating sex trafficking in Hawaii there um, it's through force fraud and coercion a trafficker will exploit and sell another being for profit but beyond any textbook or Wikipedia answer I could give you, human trafficking is really the, vuln um, the exploitation of vulnerability. So a pimp or a trafficker, they're going to find anything that makes someone vulnerable, and they're going to pick at it and pick at it and pick at it until they really break that person, and they view that person, and that person views themselves as nothing more than an object to be sold. Wow, okay, so this is a very... This platform of yours, can you can be connected in so many other ways. I mean... You mean yeah. you're looking at a very, uh, very internal commitment for the rest of your life. Yes. And um, you know the the great thing is just the way you describe what human trafficking is. You basically nailed down a lot of today's um, problems, such as what you described as a pimp or someone that that, that traffics someone else. Mm -hmm. That's a form, an adult form of bullying. Yes. Right. It really is. Yeah. And that's that's today's main one of um, Hawaii's, or actually the world's problems in, in the Hawaii school systems. Yes. In, in, the, in the school systems is bullying. Mm -hmm. You know whether it's social media or whether it's in person. And you know, hearing your mission and your and, and your cause and getting to uh, know you over the few months, uh, you're, you're you're talking about just a thing of self worth. Yes, right? it's all about self worth. I mean. There are so many different underlying facts that contribute to human trafficking. Mm -hmm. There's um, self-abuse or people that are just depressed and stressed out in their own life. And then beyond that, there's uh, homelessness. It's a huge problem. Hawaii sees an annual 200 to 300 runaways per month. And 80% are targeted by a trafficker within the first 48 hours of leaving home. That's a huge, that's a huge number. If you, 80% of 300 is 240. 240 kids being trafficked each month in Hawaii alone. Wow, okay. And and this is a personal passion of yours. Yes. Of course, I got to realize that in your, in your interview mm -hmm. and um, judging you in the competition. Uh, it, was, it was such a pleasure to, to be one of her judges. Um, Janae, she is very well-spoken. She came in an interview very confident. And, and this is and it's what's needed to address something like this is very it's, it's a you have to be a very very strong role model you have to always be grounded uh, because you're dealing with a lot of teenagers and children that have low self-esteem yeah and that role model I mean that's a lot of pressure 
Yeah. Right? So that's I know that's a lot of pressure, and and I I fail at that all the time. No, I fail I at that you do all a wonderful the time. Job. A wonderful you job. know, it's just hard to be human, right? And then you're under a microscope, and 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 it's a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's a lot, and. And I know you got a huge, huge road ahead of you, and I'm very excited to see what you're doing. In fact, you are doing something now. You just started an organization. I did. I just started Unite. It's an educational nonprofit dedicated to eradicating sex trafficking through prevention and awareness in schools by helping students um, learn about safe spaces and figure out how to protect themselves, their family, and their friends. Then we can, education ends exploitation. So we can eradicate human trafficking within a generation. If okay. we do, if we focus on prevention. So Unite is a uh, movement in bringing awareness. Yeah, through oh, schools. Okay, okay. So and students 14 to about 18 or whenever they graduate. Okay, awesome. And then, so you have a Facebook page for that. I right? do have a Facebook yes. page, so you can okay. follow us on Facebook on Unite. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I also have a website. It's www.endswithus.org. Okay, and if you miss that, you can contact us, and then we'll have all the info just in case it doesn't come out on the screen. Because <laughs> I, I think that was impromptu, but um, but you can contact Prayers on Wings, and we'll have all of Jenny's information if you uh, want to help with this cause, with this movement. Of course, like I, like we said, it is a bigger form of bullying, and it's because we haven't addressed the bullying before. Yeah, you know, uh, and that's not really addressing the bullying. I guess it's more instilling instilling more morale values. Yeah, and, it's all about your all core that, right? values. Right. So it's like we need to take care of the, the generation, but. Mm -hmm. if we were never taken care of then. It's like Those it underlying spirals, factors. Right. Exactly. And it does. And it can spiral out of control so quickly and so easily. Okay. So you've got this. You've got your pageant that's coming up and that's going to be on May 30th. And, yes. And we don't know when this show, show's going to air. So <laughs> we're not going to pretend like it's <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's uh, future or, or past or anything. But you've got, like I said, today's May 16th. And your pageant is May 30th. May 30th. Right. So, so, so close. I'm so excited and anxious. And of course, there's a little bit of nerves, but you're trying to conceal right. them. And I'm just ready to put my best foot forward. And this is something that I want so badly. So hopefully it shines in my favor. To show the commitment <laughs> of Janae, I know her schedule is busy. I mean, you're talking about you, you've got a lot of um, prepping to do for this pageant, right? Yes. And you have to be you, so well-rounded. Right. So it's And your talent is. Um, you did, are you still doing the dancing? I am gonna dance. So my talent is really special this year. I'm actually, talent's my favorite part of the entire competition. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of interview. Mm -hmm. I like it, but it's not my favorite. Talent, however, I've danced my entire life in classical ballet for 13 years. So I am gonna do a contemporary piece to My Heart Will Go On, okay. sung by Hawaii's own Tioni Tam Singh. Awesome. So really exciting. She did a, a, a beautiful rendition for me. And my talent is actually choreographed by Sabrina Ponce, Anna, and she is from 24-7 Dance Force. But for me, my talent is so special this year because it's inspired by and dedicated to my grandmother, who was like my mom, and unfortunately, I lost her to cancer this year. Oh, so it's, it's really special. And I told her, one of the last things I told her um, before she passed was, I promise you, Grandma, we are going to walk across that Miss America stage together. So I hope to do that, and I know that she's, although she's not going to be in the audience, she's going to be right there on that Miss Hawaii stage with me in my heart, and that's the, truly the best place in the, in the entire pageant and in the entire house, so. You know, thank you, thank you, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> thank you for sharing that with us. You should have let me know that you were going to say that. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, that was, that, for those of you that know me, that, like, really, really touches my heart. And I'm not afraid to cry on camera. Okay. I, I don't okay, care. Okay, good. I, I know. I'm care. a crier myself. And, you know, <laughs> you know, thank you. I'm glad that, I'm glad you actually spoke about that. It, it, it just shows us how much more passionate you are about everything that you do. And I know, I know that you dance for UH, too. I do. I've danced for the UH Rainbow Warrior dance team. Go Bows. It's crazy. <laughs> so there's a lot of scheduling for that. Yeah, right. that was a and huge then, time commitment. And then, of course, I know how um, I know Sherry Teflinger, and I know yes. she's she's hardcore. That girl she is, is but all, she, it's she's great. A rock. I need she's that a rock. And and you know we're gonna we're gonna call her. We're gonna hopefully she'll <laughs> come on the um, come on the show too. Oh yeah. Yeah. And um, wow. So you got all of this. You are focused on your future ahead. And I know no matter what happens, that this will be something that you will commit to. Oh yes. For, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I didn't get to ask you this beforehand, but um, I actually want to know, 
I know a bunch of our viewers are going to know why. Why is this such a passion for you, your mission? My, my, my mission of human trafficking? Or, my yes. platform. My platform is really special to me. I, Like many people, I honestly had no idea what trafficking was before I decided that I wanted to tackle it. And it's something that I had, I had watched Taken, of course. We all watched Taken. We're like, oh, human trafficking, sure. that's They steal people, and then they sell them. It's really not like that at all. It's a long, long process. And for me, I thought that it had only existed in third world countries, in places like Africa, and Thailand, and Amsterdam. I had no idea that it existed in the United States, much less in Hawaii, until my cousin actually opened up to me about her story. So when she was 14, she ran away from home. She was approached by a trafficker and was then um, sold and exploited on our shores for four years. The first year that she had been trafficked, she was 14, and she um, got pregnant by a John. She then um, she gave birth to that child. The night that she gave birth, her pimp made her go out and work on the track again in Waikiki. He then took her child and murdered her. So she lost her child, and you know it's she's been out of it for a long time, but she still just. She has no, she has no self worth. She still believes herself to be an object, and no woman, no human being, is just an object to be sold. Wow, that's heavy. Okay, so I know a lot of you out there are probably thinking, "Wow, you know, that that's a really, really uh, hard story," and we think that that's like a one, a uh, once in a once in a while kind of thing. But as no. I say in life, if there's one person that feels it or one person that's going through it, there's a billion people that's going through the same thing. Yes. Life is a circle. Uh, life lessons are all the same. We might have a little bit different scenarios, mm -hmm. but there's somebody else that's going through it. And that's why Prayers and Wings mission is inspiring others to crisis. Yeah. Because we need to come out of our shell because there's somebody else that's going through this that needs to hear exactly. the story. And that's what you're doing. You're bringing awareness for everyone, mm -hmm. uh, you're telling the story, and it's really a hard story to digest because you think yeah. that it was something that could never happen to you. A normal person would be like, "That'll never happen to me. I don't care." Yeah, so you, no, seriously, that's side. really what it is. And you don't know that maybe it could be your cousin or it could be your next door neighbor that's doing it. Mm -hmm. you know? It's so easy. This could really, honestly, happen to anyone. You don't. You think that maybe it's gonna. Yes, underlying causes like homelessness and sexual abuse in the homes and bullying and um, just being depressed, those are those contribute, they make you an easier target, but this can honestly happen to anyone. Last year in 2014, there was a, um, a human trafficking bust, a sex trafficking bust in, that happened in uh, three different high schools here in Hawaii. And they were Campbell, um, Farrington, and Moana Lua. The largest bust came from Moana Lua with eight students. And that's, that's, those are people from influential families. Moana Lua is a very good high school. So this really can happen to anyone. I had a victim tell me, um, she's actually, she's, 20, she's 24 now. She now works uh, for Microsoft. She was a former victim for six years. She was sold in Hawaii. And now she works for Microsoft. She got herself out. She got her degree. And now she's going on to do incredible things. But she told me that the one thing she wished someone would have told her is that it's not if a trafficker is going to look for you because they're already looking. So don't make yourself an easy, an easy target. I get it. You know, it, um, as a former drug addict, I was a 10-year meth user. Um, I guess it's like I said, everything revolves in a circle and everything is connected to each other. And it's, I guess it's the same thing as, as drugs. You know, yeah. so when I went down in drugs and I went down pretty hard, you know, homeless, uh, living, living in cars and, and whatnot. And, and I, was, I was just a devil itself. And, and I can see where this comes out. You know, um, yes, the women are more the, are, are the ones that are doing this and being exploited. And the, the men are the ones that's pushing it out. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not, I, mean, I don't sound, mean to sound sexist, but that's kind of like <laughs> how it goes. Um, and and uh, I can see, I, I Maybe I probably closed my eyes to it, but we had terms of what we would call people that would that would traffic themselves for yeah. not for money, but it was for drugs, yeah. you know, or it was for a place to sleep, or it was even for food. Yeah, you know, and it's like, how can somebody go through that? And it's because of for at that at that time it was the drug abuse, you know, the drugs mm -hmm. took 
control over the body and you didn't feel like you was worth anything unless you was high and, and when you were down you didn't you weren't high it just took over and you were willing to do anything yeah to feel like you were somebody again because you needed to get the next the next high exactly yeah. and you know that really relates that's almost the exact thing of what trafficking is it's the breaking in process is what we call it and it's when you take someone and you make them completely dependent on you or you the victim will become completely dependent on the pimp not just it's not just about the person it's about it's about the sex they just believe that they have nothing worth than their bodies and that they have nothing worth themselves except sex and having to sell that in order to please someone else okay. and that's what breaking someone is and that's the same thing that you were talking mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. being broken down to nothing more than an object or the need to survive and it's the same thing, even if we were to get out of the sex part, even the case of slavery, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same thing that you would actually feel that worthless, that you would let somebody, again, bully you yeah. into doing something, not treating you fairly, underpaid, or just doing just for something very, very simple that you could actually get yourself as a human being mm -hmm. that just had a little bit of self-esteem, but they actually broken down to nothing to where that person yeah, you're Constant completely limit. codependent. Yeah. Wow. Completely. So that's heavy. So you, you have this Unite going on. Yes. And so it's a movement. So what are your plans with um, with Unite? Is it just you or is there a bunch of other <laughs> a bunch of other people in this? Well, we are just in the starting phases. Mm -hmm. So I recently created this organization, which is an educational program. So I go into a lot of different schools and I'll talk to them about the dangers and how to raise awareness. Because really, we're all contributing to the problem if we're not aware of it. Okay. So, um, however, I, my goal is I'm trying to mesh the organization towards a similar platform of um, the meth, Hawaii meth, not even once, where they have different student leaders throughout schools, and that way that they can help create the safe spaces. Because truly, although I'm 20 years old, so I'm not in high school, I, I don't see what happens in these schools. And having a peer be able to define and know what human trafficking is, and they can spot it, they'll find it faster than any one of us, any advocate. And then that's how we can help be a part of the solution. So that's my goal is to get, within the next year, I'm hoping to have student leaders throughout every school and hopefully have every school in the state participate. Very cool, okay, so it's kind of gonna be kind of hit it like a, uh, like a, like how the D.A.R.E. programs went in. Yeah, it's similar right? to kinda the D.A.R.E. Like as that, well. Right? It started out really small and then mm -hmm. it made this movement and then it went boom, just yes. exploded. Okay, perfect. And and that's awesome to know because it, we know that you're going to be addressing a lot of things, whether mm -hmm. it's um, domestic violence or whether yes. it's drug abuse mm -hmm. or, or, or anything for that fact because it's all these factors that take away your self-worth. Yeah, and they're all connected. And we talked earlier about how communication is key. It really is. Okay. And, of course, for those of you, for those of you that are just joining us and don't know what Prayers on, on Wings about, our first mission is building bridges of communication. And then inspiring others through crisis. And the reason that because of that is in crisis, no one wants to feel alone. And uh, for us, our, our new mission has become so no child feels alone. And uh, what we want is children to grow up healthy and become strong adults, and take care of the next generation. That's kind of like what Prayers and Wings is doing. And which is very similar to what Janae is doing in her mission. It all goes in the same. And she told me that communication is key. It and is. why is that? Why do you believe communication is key? Well, I mean, I think the best way that I could describe it is that through human trafficking, I met this victim. I recently emancipated this victim who began being trafficked when she was 14, and she's now 16, so she was trafficked for two years. But her underlying cause is that she, her father used to abuse her. He sexually abused her from the time she was nine. And she finally got the courage to tell her mom about it, and her mom didn't believe her. And that's that communication gap is what caused her to become trafficked. And that was the starting, that was her breaking point. Wow. What, without having that communication, without having a parent or someone who you know should automatically believe your child, especially with something so devastating, you just need to have that communication. You need to be able to talk to someone and open up. Because it took me 11 weeks to get her to open up about that story, because that was her breaking point. Wow, okay, okay, I get it. And that's like kind of like what we're doing. Um, you know, it was so cool. I just went in for a reading. Mm -hmm. And the book, Lucky Ducky, is about a boy with cancer, uh -huh. okay, fighting leukemia. 
And um, it was so cute because it was a little girl that asked, that raised her hand, because I always, always open up for question and answer. And I, she was, she was first, first grade or third grade? I don't know, really, <laughs> she was young. Okay, she was either first or third grade. And she raised her hand and she said, Uncle, Uncle Ducky, um, when you were sick, did you ever get bullied? You know, and I said, yes. I said, yes, babe, I did. You know, because I got bullied all the time. And, and then I knew, you know, that she was asking for herself. So I said, do you know someone that's being bullied? And she put her head down and she, th she pointed to herself. And Aww. she started crying, you know, and not even her teacher knew. But they made that connection. And kids yeah. are so smart, you know, we give them so little bit credit sometimes, but they are so intuitive. And she was able to make the connection with the book, even though it was talking about a boy with cancer, she related it to herself, herself. As, as being bullied. And I, I told her thank you for coming out and, and, and talking about it because what she's doing today will help other children that haven't spoken yet. And, that, and that's the part of inspiring others to crisis yeah. that, that Perez and Wings is so focused on. And, um, and it's just so great to hear you speak at 20, at 20, <laughs> to speak Thank about you. this. I mean, it took me, <laughs> it took me to 38 to figure, <laughs> out, to figure out all my mistakes were mistakes. You know, I just thought I was on that, um, that low self-esteem thing for a while, even after drugs. You know all the bad things I did to my my mom, my dad, and all the friends that I lost, and and then going back to even when cancer, um, I started I started drugs on my last month of chemo, and I went through chemo for years. If you can imagine, my last month of chemo, I became an ice addict. You know, you, oh you ask yourself how the heck, right? And it's because I didn't have the communication through my cancer mm -hmm. that the chemo didn't didn't just kill my cells and my cancer; it also killed my self esteem. Yeah, and we don't know and uh -huh. then why we don't know is because we weren't aware and that's why I truly believe in your platform which is creating awareness yeah awareness is key right it is and from there it leads to make, action and right, education right I'm so glad I'm so glad you hear about that and if you guys want to learn how to support unite or prayers and wings or anything get involved uh, become become not a statistic but become um, part of the solution yeah uh, give us a call or you can hit Janae up on her Facebook and and support her through her through her journey of life you know Thank it's you. not just please, even, please it's not even just um, it's not even just a Miss America thing this your life is so big I yes, see there's so many things that come from this, and I'm so, so, so blessed, whether it's my platform or my educational goals and hopefully my um, Unite and trying to turn that and take me, and take me into um, human trafficking mm -hmm. as, a, as an advocate, and hopefully I'm trying to become a human rights attorney. So, you know, it's just, the, it's just the growing process of what you become and the small things that you do and the small steps that you take to get you somewhere. Human rights attorney, really? Wow. We, so, what else is in <laughs> what else is in your future? I mean, you're you're crazy busy, you're so yes. ambitious, and you just have all these, and you're focused. That's what I love. About, Thank you. I love about it. You're not scatterbrained. You're, you're fo <laughs> try you're not focused. to be. Yeah, I try. <laughs> you're focused, and I know you got great um, you got great support. You got a great I family. I do. I have an incredible right. family. And then you got great uh, mentors and mm -hmm. inspirations. I do. And, and a lot of people that believe in you and then more importantly you believe in them yes. and that circle of inspiration mm -hmm. keeps continuing to roll right? of course and I always have the Lord with me and so oh, perfect and we're not uh, over here we're not afraid to talk about to talk about Jesus because that's my that's my man too that's, you, you need you need man, something right? to keep you keep your faith strong so what, what's what else is in store for you um, beyond Miss Hawaii and then hopefully going on to Miss America, uh -huh. that's my goal. Mm -hmm. I have Unite and then I'm trying to use my Miss Hawaii scholarship and my Miss America scholarships to become a human rights attorney because I want to be able to give back to those victims of human trafficking and be someone, the attorney that will fight for them for their rights. Wow. And then beyond that, I'm also working with Imua Alliance um, this next legislative session in January to hopefully mandate sex trafficking education and training for teachers and students during the 2016 um, curriculum for schools. Wow. Yeah, so that's that's kind of the big step for me right now. And, th and this is going to all happen in one month? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Well, Miss Hawaii is the first thing that I'm focusing right, on. I right. have to win that. <laughs> right. That's, that's so awesome. And it's, it's been such a pleasure of having you here. And, 
and um, you know I will follow you, not stalk you, <laughs> because I'm invited to follow you, right? Yes. And, and I and, and so are all of you, please. And you're going after the. You're not a 501c3. I actually just submitted my for my GE tax okay. um, number, and then I'm submitting all of my paperwork for my nonprofit. So hopefully within the next month or so, I will have my 501c3 Perfect. ready to go. Perfect. And then when you do have your 501c3 status, you will come back on the show, and then oh. we can find out on ways to support you. You know, the great thing about being a 501c3 is everything is 100 percent tax, tax deductible, deductible to all yes. extent of the law right and then from there you can do bigger you can do bigger missions yes and then you can start traveling and then you can start applying for grants yes and because it's not just a Hawaii problem but of course we're going to take care of the no the 33 Hawaii million first. slaves worldwide 250 sex trafficking victims in Hawaii alone and you want this awareness to of course spread worldwide yes right. I want Hawaii to be a leader in this movement that is awesome that is so awesome and you know it's, it's sad it, it is sad I didn't know those st statistics and when you talk about how close Hawaii is and to hear those numbers really sucks because you, it does. you know it's because we weren't aware you mm -hmm. know and you think wow but that's my friend's friend how can my friend's friend do that to my friend's friend and that, that's, exactly. why, like, my, that's like my relative and then you hear these stories and then I guess the the natural thing a lot of people do is no, nah, that's not happening. That yeah, didn't, that didn't they happen. turn the blind eye or they think, well, I can't make an impact or that's not going to happen to me, so right. I'm not going to care. But really, then we're all contributing to the problem. So we all need to be a part of the solution. Wow. Okay, so that's how we want to be. We want to be part of the solution. We are almost out of time. We will watch you <laughs> uh, as you continue to grow. So, of course, Please, the pageant you. will be on the 30th of May, mm -hmm. and this will be aired after that. But you can follow her and follow Unite and follow the movement and all the positive energy um, through Facebook or even on the web or even hopefully very soon in the schools. Yes, right? yes. So we'd like to thank Janae over here for, and we wish you the best. President Wings wish you the best and thank you to Alelo. Yes, thank you. We are out.